At the furthest end of the valley, over 1,000 feet above sea level, is the village of Abergwynvy. Here, as elsewhere in the South Wales valleys of the 19th and 20th centuries, rich seams of coal were discovered deep underground, and, in the midst of this small community and its neighbouring village of Blaingwynvy, the pit heads dominated the skyline, surrounded by the usual assortment of colliery buildings, workshops, offices, sheds, a yard for storing timber, much of the ground covered by railway lines and tramways. The colliery was at the centre of village life and most of the inhabitants depended on it. The Cape as it was known and is still referred to locally though no one is quite sure why. Does it refer to the Cape of Good Hope or is there some other reason? The colliery was originally called the Great Western, since the coal mined here provided high-grade steam coal for the Great Western Railway. Later it was renamed the Ocean Navigation, before finally becoming the Avon Colliery. Finally the colliery closed in 1969, 91 years after first being sunk and the buildings mostly fell into ruin or disappeared altogether the shafts capped in concrete the Great Western Hotel is a reminder of the old days mining villages often had very large imposing hotels standing in their main streets the railway has gone Abergwynby station now replaced by dense undergrowth the winding road that once led down to the platform, now a mere outline on the embankment. Blindgwynvy too had its railway, the Rhondda and Swansea Bay line, which ran through the mountain to Triorchy and beyond. The tunnel entrance has vanished beneath the landscaped grass slope. Jersey Road was once full of shops including the Gwynvy Cooperative Society stores, which continues to run as a community cooperative where local people can buy their necessities. The Blind Gwynvy Workmen's Hall, once paid for by a weekly subscription from the miners' wages, is run today by the council as a social centre providing a library as well as a venue for other activities such as the Silver Band. The snooker room is the one part of the building that has been kept in its original form and is much enjoyed by local enthusiasts. and village children play beneath the stained glass window that depicts their heritage. Abergwynvy Junior School stood at one time on the side of the mountain until the building became unsafe and the new school was built on the site of the old dismantled Avon Colliery more or less where one pit head used to be. The teachers make sure that each new generation of children learn about the past. In years gone by, the local football team, Gwynvy United, used to play up on the recreation ground, on top of the Gethley Mountain above Abergwynvy. Whenever the ball was accidentally kicked off the pitch, it would have to be fetched from the road far below. Today's team plays on a different field, in a much more sheltered position on the opposite side of the valley. When the team isn't playing a game, the home of Gwynvy United is the Gethley Hotel, where Mervyn Blackmore sits in his usual corner, sipping a pint. Mervyn was a boxer rather than a footballer and represented Wales in its senior amateur international side against England in 1953. Land reclamation. The scars of the past are gradually erased from the valley floor. 
Like gigantic, unwieldy creatures, these machines bury the evidence of an industrial age under the soil. Glencorug, like Abergwynvi, was a mining community with drift mines running into the hillsides, as well as the deep underground shafts. Unlike Abergwynvi, Glencorug is a dead end for the road goes no further. The landscaping stretches from the site of the Aniskorug colliery down the valley towards Kummer, where the Nantaulith colliery was situated. St. John's Church in Glencorug is built on the site of the first church, which was reputedly served by the monks of Margam Abbey. Reverend Cyril Lasky greets his parishioners at the south porch as they leave after Sunday morning service. Apart from the old scattered farms, most of the recognisable Glencorug grew up to serve the coal mines and the levels, which were numerous in this area. Three public houses used to stand in a row, the Queen's Hotel and the Collier's Arms. The Collier's has gone, but the Queen's remains as a private house. And on the other side of the road, the Castle Hotel, now a house as well. The massive old workman's hall is now a very popular pub. The south pit of the Glencorug Colliery in the 1950s Looking down the valley towards Glencorug, the land is now restored back to its original state. These are the Kumkas cottages that survived the flood of 1909, now just another memory of the past, gone forever. But all the land reclamation has not just been a matter of covering over an important period in the valley's history. Something new has emerged, in the shape of the Glencorug Ponds, a delightful series of lakes used for fishing. Where the River Corug comes down one valley and meets the River Gwynvi from the other, this is the original commercial heart of Cummer. Still resplendent with its tall buildings. One of the most imposing of these is the cooperative store which opened in 1913. The front of the building was, in the first instance, only two storeys high, and a third floor was added later. It is no longer used as a shop, but has become a private residence. Two of Cummer's railway bridges, the tracks long gone. The viaduct of the Rondra and Swansea Bay Railway, now almost hidden from view by trees, is no more than a pleasant country footpath where the steam trains used to thunder through. The iron viaduct, another relic of the Great Railway era, was once threatened by demolition, but thankfully it's still standing. This is when the trains still ran through the Maesteg Tunnel. Three railway companies ran their lines through Cummer, but when the closures began, soon there was little left to show for it, except for the refreshment rooms, built in 1886, and maintained as a fine example of railway architecture, the wooden sleepers still in position beneath the platform, the warning notice kept as an intriguing piece of memorabilia.